You could be sitting on $1.6 million with your Super Mario 64 copy. Could you be a secret millionaire? I'm gonna help you figure out whether or not you have a million dollars inside your home right now. Not only that, we're addressing why the heck the OLED is $50 more, and I went shopping. We're checking out the Nintendo collab with Uniqlo. Currently, a Super Mario 64 copy just sold from Heritage Auction House for $1.6 million. Now, if you've been a Nintendo fan for a long time, you might own a copy of that yourself, which is really exciting. This record-breaking sale for a pristine, unopened copy was the most any vintage video game has sold for in history. Only last week, a previous record had been set by an original copy of the NES version of Legend of Zelda. This was sold for $878,000. This broke a prior record in November of a Super Mario Bros. copy that was sold for $156,000. So as you can see, this trend is just going higher and higher and higher when it comes to vintage games. So please, this is not the time to clean out your closet. Keep your stuff with you. And if you're wondering if you may have a copy worth millions, I'm gonna go through the requirements for you. What they are looking for is pristine, unopened copies of these retro games. So if you have a copy that is still in the box, or has been opened but is in incredible condition, maybe you opened it and just never played it, this is for you. If you have just like a regular copy of these games that you've opened and played a bunch of times, unfortunately, you're looking at about $24 for a sale. But those of you who are collectors, it is your market right now, and I am so excited for you. So if you're the next person to break this auction record, I don't know, maybe send me some flowers as a thank you. In breaking Nintendo news, I went shopping! It's raining merch! That's right, if you don't know, Unique Low actually partnered with Nintendo to create not only Animal Crossing shirts, but Pokemon shirts, and I went to the store to check it out, and I got all the cutest ones to show you. All right, so this Animal Crossing shirt is really understated. I really like it. It's just got this super cute symbols in the front. I had to get an extra small because it is long as heck. I think it's supposed to be one of those like t-shirt dresses, but if you're like me and have really long legs, you know, you might just end up tucking the shirt into a skirt or something like that. So this is a front. It's got all your little villagers on it and it says at the very bottom, Animal Crossing's New Horizon. All right, this is the next Animal Crossing shirt. This one is actually my favorite. I think it's so cute. It's so comfortable. It's also got these cute little buttons on the side too. It's just a cute shirt, 10 out of 10. Good job, Uniqlo. This is my favorite shirt of all the shirts. It's so comfortable. Sometimes when you get shirts that have things embroidered on them, they're so itchy underneath the embroider, but it's so soft, a million out of 10. I love this shirt. This is my new, just in general, favorite shirt. And it's got a cute little Psyduck, and it says time for a break. Who doesn't need a break all the time? All right, next up is this one. Dun, dun, dun. I really like this one. It's really soft, like all the other ones. And it has the cutest Pokemon from Sword and Shield on it. My only qualm about this shirt is I feel like I should confess, this is a child shirt. This is a child size 13. You might not be able to necessarily get this shirt, but it's still pretty big for a child size 13, so just try it. I believe in you. All right, guys, next up is this one. How cute is it? I really like the look of this overall, and it's super soft. Something I personally really like about this, too, is that usually when you have shirts that have like a lot of paint or whatever that is, it can get kind of like really heavy and kind of like bubble together. But each of these letters is done individually, so you don't have that problem. All right, and our grand finale is this one. Yay! It's super cute. I just love the overall vibes of this shirt. I can't wait to show it off for you guys. This is my absolute favorite shirt. I feel like it just encapsulates the vibe of this channel really well. Um, it's got kind of neon cutouts of a bunch of different Pokemon. So if you're waiting in line and you're super bored, built-in entertainment right there. We're going virtual shopping now. Take me to Uniqlo. I'm lost in Uniqlo world. All right, we made it. We're in Uniqlo. I'm so excited. 
Everything is so organized, just like in the real store. I'm looking for our shirts that we got. Oh, there's one. I see our shirt, the one with the symbols on it. Whoa, there's people working here. They got prices. This is, this is way classier than the other store I was in. It's making me jealous because I'm seeing shirts here that were sold out when I went. It's funny in this one, they couldn't really quite capture the little symbols we had in the front of our shirt. So it looks a little weird, but I know what it is. And it does say short sleeve dress. So that's probably why that shirt was so long. This is so fun. I wish more stores would do this. This is so interactive and you can match your characters. So if you're like me and spent your entire weekend scouring the internet trying to get that elusive white copy of the Nintendo Switch OLED, you may have noticed something a little fishy on Walmart's part. The day after pre-orders originally went out, Walmart started selling their Nintendo OLED neon version, just the neon version for $2.99 which is the same price as a regular Switch. At first, I thought it was a mistake. I was like, they're probably gonna fix this. That is extremely suspicious to me. Why are they allowed to do it? I don't know if Best Buy or even Nintendo are gonna follow in suit. And what was the reason? Were the neon versions just not selling as well as the white ones? I know it was very hard, at least on my end, to get a white one. And I did have a friend who thought they were getting a white one and accidentally bought a neon one, then went back and tried to buy a white one again and ended up with another neon one. <laughs> so there had to be some surplus of neon OLED switches going on. But this could be an interesting decision point for people who have been waiting to buy a Switch and were choosing between either springing the extra money to get that OLED version or just starting with a regular Switch. As of right now, it's the same price for you. The very first thing that's gonna start being out of date is going to be the Switch when they have the Switch OLED waiting right there for them. Save that money, boo. Well, while we're talking about the price of Switch OLEDs, a lot of people aren't happy about this $50 increase for the new OLED model, especially when it came out that the cost to actually produce this new model was only $10 more than the original. The main reason that we're noticing such a differential in price between what they're paying to get these made and what we're getting is that a lot of the parts that they were using when they originally created the Switch are cheaper now because the technology is older. And is it on Nintendo that they should have been updating to new technology? Yes. But back when they created the original Switch, it was more expensive to create, which is where the original price point came from. And now, even though it's still technically only $10 more than what they spent, there's different numbers that they're working with. All right, you guys, we have some breaking news from Nintendo. Right after I finished filming this, Nintendo actually tweeted saying that the account that we went through was incorrect and that they actually did not have those profit margins from the Switch OLED. Did they say what their real profit margins are? No, not at all. <laughs> they just basically said, nah, uh and left it at that. I think Nintendo's being a little bit more cautious with this version because when they updated the Wii, with the Wii U, they actually ended up selling these units at a loss. Nintendo has stated that these units cost them about $260 to produce, and they ended up selling them for about 300, which is a pretty tight margin. Not to mention, the Wii U did not do very well in sales, so I feel like you can't necessarily blame Nintendo for wanting to be really cautious when it comes to this new model, especially too, because it's not that different. So it kind of feels like maybe a lot of people aren't going to be willing to jump in and make that switch for a new switch. 